back, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is a comedian who you've seen in The League, Fresh Off the Boat, and now Beep. Please welcome Paul Shear. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Now, uh, I love Veep. It's I, the I'm best show. I'm obsessed with the show. So good. I watch everything. I watch the super cuts. Uh, you know, I must be very excited to be on it. Yeah, it's like a dream come true. It's kind of working for like a comedy Aaron Sorkin in the sense that like everything's so tightly scripted and the words are so beautifully kind of written and the insults are so harsh. I love it. Uh, you're, you live in Los Angeles now yes. uh, with your wife, uh, June Diane Raphael. Got yes. the last name right? Raphael. Yeah, Raphael. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was also in this season of On uh, Veep, yeah, which is she nice. She played the painter, yeah. We to work together, share a cab. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you have two young sons. At, at home, is it comedy or is it just poop and Sesame Street? Oh, we are the most competitive to make these kids laugh. I'm like doing a full-on Carrot Top show nonstop. <laughs> And no offense to Carrot Top, I actually now understand how hard it is to do a show like that. I'm pulling things out. I'm, like, making faces. How, how old are we talking here? Three years old and nine months. That's a tough audience. Yeah, nine they're months tough, is a tough audience. Because they don't have object permanence. Exactly. <laughs> Look. <laughs> you know, I, I would say the, the most depressing moment, though, was I came home one night and I caught my wife stealing one of my bits. Like, one of my classic bits, which is, like, the rubber ducky who farts. Uh, and it works great. The three-year-old loves it. Yes. And I caught her doing the rubber ducky of farts, and I was like, what? And she, she looked like she was caught cheating. She's like, I, I didn't. And I was like, you stole a bit? How did you steal a bit? And it, would, it would really put a rift in our relationship now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just parallel thinking, honey. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the obvious go-to. How does the nine-month-old uh, respond to the rubber duck fart thing? You know, he's not there yet. It's a little above him. You yeah. know, he's still, he's just still in the regular fart. No rubber duck is needed for him. <laughs> That's tougher. <laughs> now, uh, you got a podcast called How Did This Get Made? What yes. are you talking about making? Uh, we have well, two our... people have heard it. <laughs> That's two, <laughs> two, two more than my And they're podcast. the best listeners we have, you two. Thank you. So um, what, what it, is it that's being made? It is um, a movie podcast, a bad movie podcast, where we talk about bad movies that are so bad that they're good. Uh, with people who made them? No, just with us. It's kind of like the conversation that you might have like at a diner after you've seen a bad movie. Like, can you believe they did that? And why would that character go over there? I hesitate to ask. <laughs> I hesitate to I ask. I thought this might come up, yeah. But have you... I haven't been in many movies. Mm. Have you ever done one of the movies that I have been in? We, we might have talked a little bit about the movie Love Guru, <laughs> which I will say you are fantastic in. Thank one of the, the shining moments of the Thank entire movie. You and Jim Gaffigan, yes. a dynamic duo, mm -hmm. and it was fantastic. Yeah, no, we, we did talk a little bit about uh, Love I Guru. I can't explain how it got made. <laughs> But I can tell you how I got in it. How did you get in? Because the writer's strike was on. Okay, right. The writer, 10 years ago, the writer's strike was on. They said, do you, you want to be in this movie? And I said, I actually have free time. <laughs> and they said, there's no script because the writer's strike is on. Yeah. And we can't write anything for this new scene we want to put in. So Gaffigan and I just went over there and we just improvised all well, day long. By the way, it's one of the, like that, the, you two are hilarious in that movie. And look, I'm not making fun of anyone who's been in a bad movie. I have done plenty of bad movies. <laughs> Uh, unabashedly so. I was in a movie with Eddie Murphy called Meet Dave, where Eddie Murphy played a spaceship, and I worked in his butt, and I, I was... You're the little man in, in his... In his butt, butt and yes. I was Lieutenant Buttocks. Yeah. And, um... Naturally. And my line was, Sir, we had a gas leak. It was silent, but not deadly. <laughs> Classic. Classic line. Your three-year-old... <laughs> yeah. Your three-year-old would love that. That, like... Zooming right to him. So I do the line, and I see the director like, huh. And I'm like, that's not a good sign, you know? And he's like, more military. I was like, sir, we have a gas leak. Silent, but not deadly. He's like, huh. Quicker. I was like, sir, we have a gas leak. It's silent, not deadly. And then he walked off set. And anyone who's ever worked in TV or movies, it's not a good sign when the director leaves the set. I didn't know what was happening. And then somebody came over to me. and was like, hey, man, this is the hardest part of the job, but uh, we're letting you go. I was like, firing me? And he's like, yeah, um, the director saw your headshot and he thought you were a fat guy. <laughs> Which is kind of like an insult and a compliment at the same time. I was like, oh, okay. 
And he's like, from the, <laughs> from the neck up, you really should work out. Yeah, you really, you got one of them fat faces, kid. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, but we got a new role for you. Get ready for this. You'll now be Lieutenant Kneecap. I was like, oh, all right. And so they wrote this part on the day. And I guess like the whole premise is that Eddie Murphy's planet needs salt. And I'm now on the ship later on. And they put a giant hot dog, like a giant, like the hot dog was this big on my lap, as tall as me. And I take a bite out of the hot dog. And I go, sure beats protein squares. It was cut from the movie. So you did not appear. In did the movie. not appear. My shoulder appears. Oh, uh, it was a classic. Really you know. nice. <laughs> it was, a, and look, it wasn't fat either. It was a skinny shoulder. Well, now in Veep, you play a producer for uh, CBS This Morning. Yes, the, C the CBS Morning News Show. Yeah. What did you do? A ride along with Charlie Rose or anything? Like I was that? his pants wrangler for seven years. I just held his pants up. No, uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, no, I, I, I kind of based the producer kind of on the producers that you have on any kind of live show. Yeah, these guys over here. Right yeah. over there, where yeah. it's. No matter what's going on, they don't care. It's like, we just got to get the show done. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Someone got stabbed. Okay, great. Great stabbing. That was great. Can we get him an uh, ambulance, please? Okay, and our next guest is Bobby Flay. Get Bobby Flay out here. Okay, great. And we're back. You know, that kind of energy. So it was like, no matter what was happening, it was just always in motion, too, because I feel like producers are always in motion. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Okay, tapping people. It's like a football coach, like, on the field. Like, yeah, great job. Cameraman, great job. Yeah, get that? You got that? Yeah, good. Okay, good. So, like, it's so, so a lot of energy around, because my character on the show is not only the floor director, a segment producer, but also runs the show. So I really have a lot of weight there. Yeah. My producer's going, okay, that's great. Can we get him off? Uh, so on, we got to keep on. going. <laughs> we got a good commercial coming up. Thanks. So nice to Thank meet you. you. So Thank much. you for being here. Feet. Feet airs Sundays on HBO. Paul Shear, everybody. We'll be right back.